Hey guys, so yesterday I recorded a couple demo reviews. No, oh, and I've got like the morning voice. Weird. Uh, so I recorded a couple demo reviews, and in one of them I was watching an STV demo um, in which I could see obviously everyone's health and uh, the medic's uber charges, everyone's positioning, stuff like that. Um, and I just offhandedly mentioned like, yeah, of course, this isn't information I have in-game. You kind of have to figure that out for yourself. And then that got me thinking. Um, something I think a lot of people fail to talk about is just information and gathering information um, and how how important um, it can be. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I do actually have some notes. Um, I do like actually having the uh, the background demo going. So we're just gonna load up a random one here. Um, let's do a Reckoner demo. Nah, we'll do a snake water demo. 40 megabytes, this should be plenty long. Looks like this is probably a scrim, so. Okay. Um, and yeah, we can pretty much get started. I'm gonna have to lower the volume because the demos are really loud for some reason. Um, my game isn't usually that loud. And then once this loads up, I should probably load it in advance next time. Because this is taking some time for no reason. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's hop right into it. So for starters, Information is just really important um, because it helps your decision making, it helps um, coordination, it just helps everyone play to the best of their ability. Because you can know what to do and you can even be practiced at doing what you know what to do in game. But if you're just operating on faulty information, then it's not going to be good for you. So. There's a few ways, <clears throat> well, there's many ways to get information, and the most basic, and what pretty much everyone does at every level, is if you'll direct your attention to the top of the screen, there is a match HUD that shows who's dead and who's alive. So you can see that my teammates are chasing these two players, because they know that it's only these two players that are alive. Meaning, uh, they pretty much get to chase as they see fit, and take an advantageous fight, knowing that there's only one scout and only one medic. Um, so there's only one combat class, really, against two. So that can be an advantageous chase. So that ended up just serving as, as a decent enough example. Um, and then the other really basic one is tracking Ubers. Um, as you play more, you get a very intuitive feel for how long it takes to charge an Uber. And you, you get an idea for um, what, like when Ubers are even or disad or what have you. Now, of course, the more specific stuff is largely a matter of a medic um, calling, or tracking it, rather. And, yeah, it's it's straightforward. I mean, you know that as long as you're building, they're going to be building at approximately... Well, they could only ever be building at the same rate. Um, and then you know if you're building particularly poorly or particularly well based on how much you're bowing versus beaming people... Um, Beaming people that aren't full buff, because then you aren't you aren't building. Um, versus maybe you just aren't healing for like a while, because no one meets up with your med on a spawn, stuff like that. So you can you can kind of suss out whether your building's good or bad, and then use your percentage relative to their medic's spawn or your medic spawn. So if you if your medic dies and their medic lives, it's usually you just tack on 40 40 percent to their medic, so it'd be 40 disad. Um, oh, 40 more disad than it would be. So if both meds used and then one med died right after the Uber, you'd expect 40 disad. Um, stuff like that. So tracking Ubers and the match hunt are two very straightforward ways to kind of hold on to information that, that you want to play off of. Um, and another really, like, central one is just comms. Um, if a player is particularly weak, then only the person who did that damage is going to know that unless they communicate it. So it's important to communicate, obviously, with your team so that people know 
targets to focus on. Uh, they know, I mean, a big one, like if a soldier is bombing, that should 100% every single time be called, no matter how obvious it might seem to everyone that that guy is bombing invisible. Um, it's still just really important to call. And honestly, I, I like to call where they're bombing from as well. Um, because they're usually bombing on my medic, and then, like, if my med knows there's a soldier bombing and they know from where, then they have a decent idea of, like, how to how to approach that situation. So just information like that, being able to give information to your team is important, and that's why uh, communication is really nice. Um, now, uh, I guess I can talk about, I have Ubers down here as well, because uh, there, there are more layers to it besides just tracking Ubers. Of course, there are voice commands that uh, can kind of conceal Ubers. And you can use that to more disrupt the, the state of, of the information the other team has. So you can, on demand, as a medic, make a call that you have Uber, even if you don't. Um, and likewise, you can use a harder to hear voice command, uh, like a Jeers command or something in the menu. Um, to mask the fully charged call. So you can hear here, actually, my medic, uh, I think, masked it. Or maybe I just missed it. But anyway, um, so you can kind of conceal when you're getting Uber. Just withhold that information for the other team um, so that, you know, if it's slight disad and they decide to play at evens um, and then you give them the, the call that you just got, like, sometime after, they might be like, oh, they were, like, much worse at building than we thought. And the next time they might be uh, actually taking that uber and punishing you on the flip side you know you could wait until you get mask the call that you get and then like another 20 30 percent later make the call a fake call that you only got uber then and they might be deceived into thinking like huh um these guys are really bad at building maybe we we take it the next time even though you're actually perfectly fine at building and you're just um encouraging them to take a bad push stuff like that just messing with the information um, gotta give a shout out to the Solemn Vow because it is a really helpful item for Medic just because it cuts through a lot of that and you can identify at, at a moment's notice and sometimes it just wins you fights like pretty significant win mind you because if you're able to be taking a team fight or something let's say like a mid fight on oh that's so sad um, and we'll talk about that later, actually. Let's say a mid-fight, um, on 5 CP goes on, like, really long to the point where meds are, like, close to getting uber. If one med spots the other and identifies that, like, they have 10 add or something, then you can totally take that uber and kill their medic and then win the fight and, like, potentially the round. Um, likewise, you could identify if it's, like, 10 dis -add, excuse me, 10 dis -add and, uh, be in a position where you're not caught to that uber until you get and then you can play the fight like normal without getting punished um koth it can be a huge deal because you know very often uh on koth you're just kind of in the middle of nowhere um that's sad uh oftentimes you're just in the middle of like a fight where you can get vision on the other team's med and oftentimes like you know um if a team is bowing a lot because they're taking a lot of spam or something like that then you might actually have convertible ad. So Solemn Vow is kind of just uh, emblematic of the information game and how how important getting information is because you get to make these plays that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to make because it's giving you like extra information. Um, yeah, so with that in mind, another big thing is sound. Um, I do listen to music when I play typically but I still, it, it's quiet enough that I still hear my game, and being able to hear your game, I think, is really, really important for a lot of reasons. Um, for starters, just voice commands um, and the sounds that characters make give you so much information as to not just where a player is. Uh, in some cases, even like knowing if they have an off class, like if you hear a sniper say, like, thanks, Doc, after being healed, which the sniper player can't really control if that's being said, it's just a matter of a medic heals them, uh, then you know they have a sniper uh, without necessarily having to, to you know, undergo that, that deadly first shot where, you know, you're not ready for, for the sniper sight line and he's fully charged and then gets a shot off on someone. So that can be really important. And also, uh, something that happens to me as a demo is 
I will. I know that there's players over a piece of map geometry that I can't see, and I shoot at them and I hit them. I know based on my hit sound how much damage that roughly was because I have like a different pitch for the different damage. Um, but good lord, am I dying? This is so sad. <laughs> but uh, so I know roughly how much damage I dealt, but I don't necessarily know who I hit. But Based on the voice lines that I hear, the people like taking damage and you know screaming and, and agony, I know who I hit. So a lot of the time I will, you know, pipe someone who I don't know who I pipe necessarily because it's being obscured by, uh, you know, a shed or a wall or something. But I hear the medic taking damage, so I know I piped the medic or at the very least piped someone close enough to the medic where he took like. 70 of the damage so that can be really important is just hearing stuff like that and sound goes beyond that um, so bombs are really important it's a big aspect of the game um, and soldiers usually at a higher level rely on timing more than anything um, in order to get uh, successful bombs off because if the other team is like completely aware and ready for a bomb, it should never work. Um, the scouts have to just catastrophically fail for the bomb to be successful. Well, there has to be multiple catastrophic fails. The scouts have to catastrophically fail. The medic probably has to hit a bad surf um, or not hit a surf at all. Stuff like that uh, in order for that to work well. So soldiers really rely on people not being ready, just working on a timing in order to get... Uh, to get success with a bomb and you can't rocket jump for a bomb without being heard uh, your rockets make noise so whether you hear an original or whether you hear a stock rockets being fired you know a soldier in that area of the map is jumping um, so a lot of the time when you know, you're just in some random point of the map, maybe you're trying to push, and you hear a soldier, like, jumping elsewhere. Like, I, I double double take sometimes and be like, is that my own soldier, or is that, like, another guy? Or if I hear a bomb behind, like, I might turn and, and be worried that there's a guy completely unidentified bombing from behind. Most of the time it is your own soldier that uh, spooks you, but... Uh, being able to hear those bombs, and especially in a situation where you know that your own soldiers are not anywhere nearby, and you know beyond a reasonable doubt that the other team's soldier is is jumping somewhere uh, that can really help you avoid you know them getting the drop on you and actually being prepared for it so being able to identify those bombs and hear the soldiers jumping is really useful for uh, for avoiding um, the consequences of, of being unprepared for it uh, another big thing as far as sound goes is traps um, in a stalemate or disat or wherever, you can hear the demo shooting stickies, um, and you can approximate which side of the map that's happening on, um, and then just go the other way a lot of the time. Um, yeah, just knowing which doors are trapped are really useful. You can relay that to your teammates, and then they know to not be dying to that uh, doorway. Even if they are still playing that doorway or still pushing it, knowing that it's trapped, they get to like be extra cautious and play it in a way that, you know... Um, a lot of the time you play in such a way that the door could be trapped, but you still want to be able to like do what you need to do and be like fast enough or what have you. Um, but if you know beyond a doubt that it's trapped because you're, you know, you heard the demo trapping that side of the map, then suddenly, um, you know, you get to play it in a way that it's completely safe. Um, so yeah, knowing, knowing those traps can be quite nice. This is not going to work, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, another thing that uh, I rarely see but does happen sometimes is you can hear footsteps in game um most people that i play with or against don't hear footsteps um but you can if you're like really if you really crank the volume up um you can some people actually cheat um to change the footstep sound with like metal clanking or, or something really loud and obvious um which 
is cheating. <laughs> Don't do that. But yeah, you can you can hear footsteps. It's, it's theoretically possible. Um, but yeah, sound is really important in being able to hear things. Um, just identify where players are at based on voice lines, um, the things they're saying, knowing who's getting hurt um, based on stuff like that. Knowing traps, knowing bombs, just knowing all sorts of information. And you can know when like a fight's going on as well. Like if you hear scatter guns being shot somewhere, you know your teammate is fighting someone, um, even if you, even if they're not calling it, um, which they should be to be clear. So yeah, sound very important. Um, another thing is spotting. So spotting's a really important facet of of the information game, um, and. It, it is what it sounds like. It's it's just your team. Usually, um, it's going to be a scout or a soldier. You don't really want a demo or a medic spotting because they're kind of valuable classes. Um, yeah, you, you don't want them dying for, for information. I mean, you don't want anyone dying for information. But scouts and soldiers can usually get out of situations more cleanly because they can jump away. Uh, whether that be with rockets or their legs. Uh, but anyway, just getting information on where your, the other team is positioned and what's going on is really important in a lot of different cases. So if you are, let's say, um, sacking into last, it's even Ubers on last, being able to spot and identify what the hold actually looks like can give you the information with which you can uh, help break the hold. So if you spot and you don't see a sentry gun, uh, or better yet, you see both scouts, meaning you know they don't have a gun, then you get to uh, just basically double sack into the last, knowing they don't have a sentry gun, and that's all, like pretty much effective enough of a plan. Um, on the flip side, if you spot and let's say you see their medic in a really weird spot, uh, you can direct your bomb towards that, that, or even just like their medic being in a standard spot. If your uh, sacker knows that that's where they're at, then you know they don't have to second guess. They don't have to take a more. They can just take a direct route essentially, uh, which is nice. So spotting is really important for for something like that, um, and even pushing it can be important. Even if you're planning to take an Uber into the next point just to flip flop it, it can be nice to know where their combo's at. Uh, because in some cases, they might just be really passive and you don't actually have to Uber to get the point. You can just get it for free and hold it long term rather than have to flip flop for it, which is nice. Uh, and that can come off the back of spotting, which is really, really nice. Uh, so, spotting is really important. And on the topic of spotting as well, Sometimes it's not about the information you're getting so much as the information you're missing. And what I mean by this is it happens most often um, when pushing out of last. Pushing out of last is always scary because the last point caps so much faster than the second point that even if you get your entire team onto the next point cleanly and are able to start cap on two if even one player from the other team gets behind and starts a back cap it's it's pretty likely that they just win the round if they aren't stopped um so back caps are a big threat and just a single player getting behind is is really threatening um so, you of course have to be really careful that you're not getting back after when you push out of last. And how do you do that? Well, if you're pushing out of last off of picks, meaning you have kills that you're pushing with, rather than just Uber Ad. Um, with Uber Ad, it's usually best to just use out of last, in my opinion, unless you have kills. Um, if you're just pushing out of last off of picks, then using a combination of the match HUD and spotting you can account for every player so if for instance you killed a they let's say they double sacked so they sent a scout and a soldier into your last but the demo got caught as well so now they're down three they're down a scout a soldier and a demo you know that the remaining classes are a soldier scout and a medic most likely they could have an off class in theory and let's actually say that soldier switched to spy 
if you start pushing out of last, it's really important to spot and communicate the spotting to your teammate. So if the first one through sees the medic and scout way in front, ready to leave, then they're going to call like, I see two. I don't see the soldier. And if this goes on for like long enough, and by long enough, I mean even just a few more seconds before that soldier is spotted, then that's extremely suspicious. And as a team, well, you might want your flank to then bait on last or something. Um, or go back to stop a potential back cap because if that guy is completely unaccounted for then that's a big deal um, and this is actually a decent example of a soldier that was unaccounted for um, <clears throat> that ended up getting a bomb on our medic so anytime I push out a last off of picks um, if I'm through I'm always calling the players that I see if um if someone hasn't already. And yeah, that's 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 really important. On top of that as well, if uh, if everyone is accounted for, if you saw a scout, a soldier, and a medic in front, then your team now knows that they can go as fast as they want because there's no no possible back cap threat. Because those players just aren't aren't alive to back cap. Everyone's accounted for. And you can take the point much faster. So it's kind of a uh, kind of win-win as well. You you help prevent a back cap threat by spotting, and based on their positioning, uh, you might also help take the point faster, which uh, is really nice. Uh, so yeah, spotting is really nice. And another example is not just pushing out a last, but really pushing into any point. Um, so if you are trying to take a point without using Uber, there are four main threats. There are sticky traps. There are uh, potentially snipers. There are bombs. And then if it's even Ubers, like if the other team has Uber as well, then there's the threat of them standing close by to the choke point you're trying to get through with intention to use their Uber for an exchange. Um, and spotting can be quite important for pushing into the next point because, and usually the way you do it is uh, soldier, pocket soldier through first, and then pocket scout, and then demo and med can get through once those those threats are cleared. Because the pocket soldier can identify if anyone's holding too close. They can identify a sniper most likely, and they can sometimes identify traps, um, at least the obvious ones. And then your pocket scout is going to do a more thorough job of clearing those traps. Um, and it's basically just a matter of getting that information before you commit your valuable resources to the push, right? Um, with that spotting. Um, yeah, so information, again, just very important for, for the stages of a push. Um, and then another thing, which is the last thing here in my notes, is off-class checking. Um, you can check and be pretty confident about whether they have an off-class or not using Spy's Disguises. Uh, so when Spy Disguises, it prioritizes disguising as a player on that class. So if there's a player on spy on the other team and your spy disguises as a spy on the other team, then they will disguise as that enemy spy every single time. It won't just do like a, a bum disguise of some random player. It'll only pick a random player if uh, no one is on that class. So if you have the... Uh, the little 3D character model um, that shows your loadout, then you can see the other off-classes cosmetics. But even if they aren't wearing any cosmetics and without any discernible way to tell if that's just a random disguise or a specific player on that class, then you can just continue re-disguising as those classes. And if you get the name of the same player over and over again on that same class, then that's a pretty telltale sign that they're on that class so of course uh there could be you know some theoretical metagame over this where like they wait some time before switching to that class you check and then they're not on it and then you actually switch to it um that i i haven't seen anyone really do it's it's only like theoretically possible um but also has a trade-off of actually like wasting some time um but 
in in most cases, if you are like on your last and the other team sacks a guy or something or double sacks or what have you, you can just have a guy switch to spy when they spawn and check for off classes. And then if you know they have a sniper, then they don't get that like most effective first shot off um, before you guys know. You just know already and you can set up in an anti-sniper hold. And uh, if they have a spy, spy really operates on... Uh, Spy really operates on not being known about, and if you know the spy happen, or if you know the spy is up, then it's like way, way, way less effective. And actually, a funny thing that I, I see somewhat often is uh, the the spy off class checking sees the the spy on the other team, and then instantly just switches to pyro, and then like boom, that spy now can't do anything at all. And sometimes the spy just wastes a ton of time as well, just trying to do something, trying to be alive, um, like trying to pick a timing that will never come, and then they end up like round resetting because instead of sacking, they just we're running the useless spy. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I just thought I'd talk about information and talk about some examples of how people get information. Um, the big ones, of course, are just going to be um, spotting and sound. Um, I think sound is, in general, like very underrated. People don't don't utilize sound enough um, for, for their decision making. Um, and this can get as complicated as you want as well. One example I can think of, actually, from Pugs last night is... Uh, it's uh, on Metalworks. I am in the other team's house on Metalworks. <clears throat> we're spamming house, trying to peek two. They got two spawners. They got a demo and a soldier spawner that we were trying to push off of. They got those before we could take the point. So we're kind of just in-house spamming. Um, the call, someone calls to rotate to alley, which makes sense. But I see towards alley that their demo is like kind of positioned towards there. So I tell my team that Ali's trapped because there is no reason that a demo from the spawn would go out of their way to walk Ali if not to set up traps over there uh, before retreating at a point, which is the position they want to be anyway. So I know Ali's trapped, but I know as well that that demo wasn't fast enough to get really deep traps up. It would have to be something more passive. So I can still get into alley very quickly, and then only when I'm in that area that I know could possibly be trapped am I, like, using that, that fine-tooth comb. And as a result, uh, I mean, to be fair, there aren't really good traps that you can set in alley, unfortunately. But if it were, like, an area of the map that I knew could be more easily trapped, um, then a potentially more deadly trap would have been identified as a result. Um, and yeah, we were able to, to spot it, diffuse it, and then take the point uh, with our ad, I think. Um, so that's that's just an example of like using information you have to make a call and like outplay your opponent. Um, another such example, in kind of the flip side, is on the same map actually, on Snakewater. So, of course, the distance between saw and lower is very far. I think the situation, and this was a while ago now, uh, I think the situation was that um, we had... I had just spawned, and it was disad. So, of course, you're expecting the other team to push with their ad. Um, I had a surplus of time to set up traps because I had just spawned. And I think they were like only now pushing into mid or something. So I can't help out with the pressure on mid. Um, so I may as well just set up traps. And I was able to trap lower and then walk towards saw and trap saw in such a way that they hear me trapping saw, but they never heard me trap lower. And I just knew they're going to go lower because they heard me trapping saw and they're not going to clear the trap lower. And you end up, or I ended up getting uh, the meta as a result. So knowing the information that you offer out um, can be quite important. If I'm spawn camping off a of mid or something, I don't shoot a sticky if someone's already spawned. I, I just use the stickies I already have there um, because I don't want the spawner to hear a sticky being fired when they spawn and know that they're getting spawn camped. I want them. I want it to be basically completely silent by the time they spawn, so there's there's no information they could use to uh, to know it's being being trapped. Likewise, some spawns have one-way windows in them. Snakewater, uh, the shutters on last are one such example. So I, I stand in such a way that, you know, I'm not 
clearly visible unless they're already looking for me. Um, basically, just not offering like information when you don't have to um, is is another important facet. Um, I'm kind of just going on about random examples here, but I do think uh, they can be indicative of how like you can really think in this game and uh, use information to the best of your abilities and either give opponents false information or deprive them of information with how you play. Um, of course, not to like your own detriment. Um, you still have to do your role and shoot and kill things, but um, you, you can think about things on a deeper level and really pay attention to the game to uh, get the best information you can and outplay your opponents to the, to the best ability that you can. Um, so yeah, I don't think I have any other closing thoughts. Uh, I'll probably cut it here, but hopefully this was uh, entertaining for you guys. And yeah, see you next time.